Hi, and welcome to the Bridgetown Daily. My name is Krista Newtor, and I'm one of the leaders of the Racial Justice Committee at Bridgetown. Now we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this daily um, because this past week, it was announced that Disney Plus was bringing Cinderella to its platform. Now, if you're not familiar with the Cinderella story, here's the 15 second version. It's a story created in 1634 of a down on her luck, fatherless girl saved from her wicked stepmother by a fairy godmother and a handsome prince. and went on to become one of the Brothers Grimm's best known works published in their 1812 fairy tale collection. But the version that I'm talking about today wasn't just any Cinderella, no. The Cinderella I'll be talking about came out two decades later in 1997. It was the Roger and Hammerstein version with singer Brandy as a princess and a wonderfully diverse cast. Yes, this was the first ever Black princess. I saw there was also a Black queen with locks in her hair. The the prince was Filipino-American and blended families were centered on the screen. There seemed to be no borders and no questions about it being weird or out of place. It just was. Everything belonged there. For me, that that moved it from being just a diverse cast to a more inclusive space. And as a child watching this, I soaked it all in. I finally saw myself in a princess for the first time ever. Ever. And I would not shut up about it. And I wasn't like loud about it, um, but I but I soaked it in in quieter ways. I would braid my hair just like the Cinderella that I saw on screen. And I would look out the window waiting for my fairy godmother that who ideally looked like Whitney Houston, like on the movie, to come tell me that everything and anything was possible. I can remember so vividly recreating the scenes a thousand times in my own little corner of my room, prancing around, singing softly, and looking longingly out the window at God knows what. This was a moment of Black history for me. And if you saw the response on social media when the news of the film's re-release was announced a couple weeks ago or last week, you would probably see that it was a big deal for a whole lot of other people as well. In fact, when it was released in 1997, it reached a whopping 23 million households which is an estimated 60 million viewers in just one night. I feel like that should tell you something, that this wonderfully diverse and inclusive setting attracted so many people. You might be wondering, okay, we get it. Why is this girl going on and on about a movie that came out two decades ago? Well, one, representation matters. It does. It really just does. Two, it can be easy to write this off like, oh, it's just a role in a film. It's just one casting um, change that was made. But our society knows now more than ever that how much entertainment and what we can see can shape us. So yes, this was and is a big deal. Three, I want to highlight that Black history is not limited to just the inventors and people who said quotable things. While that's all great, and we should learn about those things, we should really study and learn about them. It's also about celebrating all of the Black contributions to society, even the ones on screen, and especially the ones that impact our children and how they see themselves in the world around them, like it did for me. And four, here's the kicker. We are called to inclusivity. (laughs) Now you're probably like, okay, okay, now she's going somewhere. Let me define inclusivity for you. Um, It is the practice or policy of including people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized. And this isn't just diversity. Inclusion goes beyond diversity. Terrence Lester says that diversity invites people to the table, but then inclusion empowers their voice to be heard while they're at the table. So in the movie, for example, that a diverse cast was one thing, but then the ability to share a story that was shaped by a diverse set of voices took it to a whole nother level. There was no tokenism here. 
inclusiveness is actually a value of Bridgetown's Racial Justice Committee. And what that means for us is we respect each other, we value diversity, and we are committed to equity and equality. We are on this journey as brothers and sisters in Christ because of the love that we have for each other and for God. So if I were to put this all together, I would say that inclusion is including people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized because of our love for God and our love for people. Let me say that again. Inclusion is including people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized. And we do this because of our love for God and our love for people. So I want you to close your eyes for a second. Unless if you're driving, please don't do that. Um, but I want you to imagine what on earth as it is in heaven looks like for you. And I want you to even take it a step further and imagine who that looks like. Did you picture a mirror image of yourself walking around on the streets of gold? Or was it a wonderfully diverse and fully inclusive situation full of beings who would otherwise be excluded or marginalized here on earth? Friends, what we see often influences and even limits what we do. And if we are not envisioning a kingdom that is diverse and inclusive, then there's a chance that we are not embracing kingdom work that is diverse and inclusive. If, you, if this strikes you in any way, I would invite you to pause and dig deeper into that. Maybe even ask yourself and even partner with God on this and how you can bring kingdom down to earth in every way that you can, including in the area of inclusion. So friends, when we talk about Black History Month, I want us to remember this. I want us to remember Cinderella. Um, as funny as that may sound. Because inclusivity can have long lasting effects in the kingdom and on earth, in a fictional world or on, in our real world. I want you to remember that inclusivity isn't necessarily a metric that we can report, but it, it is something that is be meaningful beyond what we could ever measure. It shows a world in the light that it should be. For me, that meant when I was watching Cinderella as a young Black girl, that I saw beauty defined in a way that looked like me, that showed me that impossible things are happening every day, and that, that without question, I can be a part of the change. It showed me an image of a leader, the kind of leader that I could be, maybe not of a kingdom like a princess would be, but certainly in the kingdom and in our world. Now, I don't want to over-spiritualize a fairy tale or belabor a point, but church, we don't need magic or a bibbity bobbity boo to know this. We already know that nothing is impossible with God. We who call Jesus Lord and embody his mission know that we are called to an inclusive kingdom as it is in heaven because of our love for God and our love for people. So let us march on on this journey together. <laughs>